Welcome to Culture Buzz. Kenneth Goldsmith, welcome to Israel. Well, thank you, Iran. It's great to be here. Yeah, um, the reason you're here is uh, uh, mainly a website named UbuWeb. Mm. Tell us about it. Well, it is the largest uh, website uh, for the avant-garde on the Internet. It's been going for 18 years, and it's free culture for everybody, uh, accessible all over the world and uh, the largest distribution for archives uh, relating to the avant-garde. Is it only in English, or may our viewers, Palestinians or Israelis, can watch some of the stuff in their languages? Uh, there are. There are both Palestinian and, uh, and a lot of Arab content, and uh, some Israeli content. We could use more. In would, you like, would, you, yeah. would you like to help curate a uh, section of, of uh, Israeli films and avant-garde uh, sounds that should be on Ubu that aren't? I'd love to, but uh, you know that the history of avant-garde uh, is sort of Anglo-centric or uh, mostly in English and um, what do you think uh, the, the history of, of avant-garde got from other cultures? Well, I, I actually think that's a fallacy, and I'd like to I'd like to, to make that fallacy clearer on UbuWeb. Yes, UbuWeb is primarily uh, dead white Western men. Primarily, that is the primary history of the avant-garde. But as we're going along, we're uncovering a lot of other avant-garde's that existed that were less known. For example, we work with Bedouin magazine, who has uh, brought a tremendous amount of uh, content from the Arab world. Uh, 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 avant-garde content to Ubu Web. Uh, we're working uh, with, with uh, Mexico to bring more Mexican culture, uh, China to bring more Chinese avant-garde. Uh, so, yeah, it's there. It's got to be dug up, though. It takes a little effort. And um, in uh, Ubu Web, uh, well, um, uh, apart from that, uh, UbuWeb is all about uh, archiving, but you're also a well-known poet, mm. and you do some similar stuff to UbuWeb in your writing. Yeah, well, it, uh, we're just we're at a moment where where it's all about the archive, and our writing is archival. Uh, we're drawing from many sources. We're collating. We're collecting. Uh, we're counting. We're quantifying in our own writing. And I think that's reflected on the work that we do everywhere, whether it's our academic work, whether it's our artistic production, or whether it's our community service like UbuWeb is. Uh, but what I'm referring to is uh, the, the effect of the digital age uh, on both uh, culture and avant-garde, and your writing, of course. Yeah. Well, none of this would have happened without the, the digital age. Uh, by the, before before uh, the digital age, archives were private places where you had to go to in order to access their treasures today. Uh, we're fighting for free information being available on the web. Uh, there's still a lot locked up in academic sites and behind paywalls, but uh, we're fighting that and hoping to get everything free. So what is your opinion on the cloud uh, referring to places that are not behind uh, paywalls? Well, the clouds are owned by corporations. Clouds are not municipalities or Clouds are not uh, a good good community service people. They're there for profit, and they're subject to battles between corporations, battles between countries, battles between copyright laws, battles of Hollywood. And uh, so I don't really trust the cloud. I mean, I like the idea of it, but it's shown us to be something other than what it is. So how do you apply an alternative in UbuWeb to that? Well, I, I make everything on UbuWeb downloadable. Uh, we can't assume that we have web connections wherever we go. As a matter of fact, most places that we go around the world, there are no web connections. Uh, and they're only locked up, or you have to pay extravagant amounts of money for it or have access. Um, so at those times, or, uh, or you're on a bus somewhere, uh, those times it's good to have artifacts able to be downloaded, and one becomes then their so it's so great that we've got UbuWeb, but there is only one of it. Mm. Well, UbuWeb ignores copyright. UbuWeb pretends copyright doesn't exist. And with the type of materials that we deal with, it really is okay. I mean, really nobody uh, seems to mind because they're not worth any real money. Uh, nobody's losing any money by us distributing these things. So 
uh, it's, it's possible to enact a utopia in this way. And uh, I'd like to ask you about your books. What's special about them? Oh, what's special about them is that I don't really write them. I take them from other places and uh, I republish previously existing texts or previously existing uh, uh, conversations uh, and uh, move them basically from one context to another. For instance, you've got a, a book named, uh, a titled Day, uh, in which you transcribe uh, a whole uh, issue of a New York Times newspaper. Mm. Why did you do that? Oh, well, I, I was at the end of the project before that, and I didn't have anything to do. And uh, it was a Friday afternoon, and the newspaper arrived, the New York Times arrived, and I looked at it, and I thought, hmm, I'm going to retype this newspaper. And so, a year and a half later, I was done. <laughs> it was a great year and a half. It was beautiful. It was one of the best times I've ever had. And, and this book, as well as others, uh, got got you a lot of fans. Uh, I don't know how many of them, but they're really uh, they like into it. it. The three yeah. of my three fans are very, <laughs> very excited about my work. Uh, okay. Listen, it's 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 not mainstream stuff. This is pretty. This is pretty uh, cult, weird stuff. You know, one never will get rich uh, or particularly famous doing this kind of thing. But, but you do uh, maintain or even uh, progress uh, a certain artistic uh, tradition. Well, I think so. I mean, it's a great tradition of the avant-garde, going back to the early modernists, to Mallarmé and Ezra Pound and Gertrude Stein, James Joyce, Charles Olson and, and the objectivists, and moving all the way into the language poets, and now we have conceptual writing. So it's a really, it's a good lineage. And none of those people got really too famous, maybe with the exception of Joyce and Stein a little bit. <laughs> But everybody else is pretty obscure. So what is conceptual writing all about? Well, conceptual writing is a type of writing where it's better to think about the book than it really is to read it. You don't want to read these books. They're really fun to talk about. But if you read it, it also, it's also fun, isn't Well, it? you have to just be some kind of strange masochist in order <laughs> to... Uh, enjoy such tortures, but I, I'm told people do. I, it's certainly not me. I, I, I dislike my own books. I, I find them to be rather awful. <laughs> but many people like your books, and many uh, students of yours uh, like the way you teach. What do you teach? I teach on creative writing. I teach them how to steal, how to appropriate, how to plagiarize uh, in a smart way. And people who cheat in your course? They get an A. <laughs> If you don't cheat, you don't do well. Yeah, but, but is there a way to cheat cheating? Uh, well, not really. I mean, you've got to be really smart. My students are so good at uh, cheating because that's all they've done their whole life. But they've never been asked to be accountable for those decisions. So I say, well, you know, why did you steal that? And how does it make sense within the other projects that you're doing? And so I, I teach them responsible plagiarism. I'd like to ask you about the effect of technology on culture. What is your opinion uh, regarding that? Uh, the effect of technology, it's everywhere, and it's getting going to be much more prevalent moving forward. But, but uh, do you think that we should just flow with technology, with technological determinism, or should we object to, to something? You, you can object, but it's not going to wait for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a done deal. I mean, this is, on, uh, this is on YouTube. It's being filmed with a digital camera. We are going to object. But, but Please, don't... stop filming. Take this, off of, take this off of YouTube right away. But don't you think that technology is biased and, and is controlled by uh, economical or political uh, big corporates or, or companies? Yeah, we don't really have much of a choice there. So, so we try to use open source materials. We try to distribute our work in open source materials, but of course we know that all the machinery is run by corporations, all the machinery is made by corporations, and we, we're not going to build it from scratch. I don't think we have much of a choice. But isn't art, and especially avant-garde, uh, sort of a mechanism to, to sting it or just fight the, in the smallest uh, bits? I think it's about how you use a technology. Uh, it's the the te technology is mostly neutral. 
It's, 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 it's what you do with the technology. Uh, and what also the technology allows you to do, you know, the, the, the uh, agenda of the apparatus, as the professor says. All right? How's that? Take this off of uh, YouTube. <laughs> I thank you. Thank you very much for this interview and for coming. Well, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs>